Over to you. My name is Kara Brisson Boyvin, and I'm the Director of Research at Media Smarts. This week is Media Literacy Week, and today marks the first annual Digital Citizen Day. It's a time where we can pause and reflect on what it means to participate and engage online. Our digitally connected world is constantly changing how we learn, work, play, explore, and interact with each other. If we are to safely exercise our online agency, we need to develop the skills and habits of digital media literacy to access devices in order to use and consume media and navigate digital networks, to use digital and media tools like cameras, software, and online platforms, and to understand and think critically about how and why media are made, examining the impacts on us and society as well as to engage with media to participate in our communities and express ourselves ethically and responsibly. Digital media literacy is something that we need to actively exercise and constantly develop, requiring lifelong learning support. Likewise, digital citizenship cannot be reduced to being on our best behavior. Being online can afford us many opportunities and privileges but it also requires that we are accountable and responsible for our actions and inactions. While our online experiences or encounters are felt in all spaces, both online and offline, how we behave and interact online is not necessarily the same as how we behave and interact offline. Our online experiences and environments shape our capacity to develop empathy and to act ethically. Aspects of digital communication can lead to empathy traps, which can prevent us from feeling empathy in situations where we normally would. When we're using the same screen to talk to our friends that we use to watch House of Dragons, and when we can't see the person we're hurting or copying from, it can be easy to forget that what we do online matters. A lack of sensory feedback can make us less likely to recognize how other people are feeling when we're online, some of the things that would generally trigger empathy in us, you know, a person's tone of voice, their body language, their facial expression, this can be absent when we interact with them online. And it can lead us to say or do things that we wouldn't normally do offline. Similarly, new and ever evolving technologies like algorithms and artificial intelligence impact our ability to recognize and respond to harmful things like bias and prejudice. In fact, there's significant research on how online platforms amplify inequities and online harms for more views, engagements, and ultimately more profits. And users don't have to en encounter overt hate speech to be exposed to hate online. Much more common are cultures of hatred, communities in which racism, misogyny, and other forms of prejudice are normalized. Not everyone experiences the internet in the same way. Many people that are racialized, gender and sexually diverse, living with a disability, or who identify as female, actively disengage from online spaces and avoid online interactions due to safety and well being concerns. We also can't assume that everyone has equal access to the internet and digital devices. Increasingly, businesses, services, and even democratic processes have migrated online, and citizens who lack digital media literacy skills risk being disadvantaged when it comes to accessing healthcare, government services, and opportunities for education, employment, and civic participation. Access is the critical starting point for developing digital literacy skills necessary for ethical digital citizenship and online agency. So we're back to this new and evolving idea of digital citizenship. What does it mean to be an ethical digital citizen? What are our responsibilities to each other? Well, the core or founding principle of digital media is that they are networked or connected. Everything and everyone online is connected to everyone else. The internet is not a silo, nor is it a vacuum. We are attached to each other, quite literally in the online sense, in this infinite web of nodes and connections. And that connection comes with responsibility. It warrants that we pause before we share something, check the sources of our information, intervene and report in situations of online abuse, racism, and sexism, and use our collective power to hold platforms and governments accountable for addressing our online safety, 
equity, and privacy concerns. To paraphrase the work of Eliza Kelly, assistant professor at Yale University, digital citizenship is different from the kind of citizenship that needs authorization or is tied to a governing or ruling body. We have the opportunity to retool citizenship in the online or digital context by working together to build and support collective online resilience. Our hope is that on this first Digital Citizen Day, we can each take a moment to reflect on the many ships that make up digital citizenship, including relationship, friendship, companionship, leadership, mentorship, stewardship, allyship, and partnership. These are the ships that make up the kind of ethical digital citizenship that we imagine can navigate us through difficult digital landscapes. Thank you. Hello.